next coach on the teleconference is Wisconsin's Paul Chris. Chris led the Badgers to a share of the Wisconsin division title and leads the program into its sixth Big Ten football championship game. Wisconsin finished the season with a 10-2 record and 7-2 in conference play and has won at least 10 games for the eighth time in the last 11 years. The Badgers are looking for their 15th Big Ten championship and first since 2012. Coach, can you give us some quick opening comments, and then we'll open the call to the media for their questions. Sure. Well, certainly uh, very appreciative of all the work that went into it by this team, you know, players, coaches, uh, support staff, right, everyone to to get us to this point where we earn a, earn a right to play in the Big Ten Championship game and earn the right to play another game. like this team a lot, and... Uh, like who they are and, and how they've kind of gone about the ups and downs of the season, and uh, I think that's why you're you're grateful for another opportunity to play a game uh, with this team, and certainly uh, going up against a, a very talented, well-coached Ohio State team. You know, we played them uh, earlier this year, and uh, and yet you know it's it's another great opportunity for us. Obviously, a big challenge, but a great opportunity. Thanks, Coach. Now we'll take questions from the media. Your first question comes on of Bill Rabinowitz of the Columbus Dispatch. Yes, Paul, what stands out to you the most about the game in October? Uh, you were you were in it 10-7, and then they scored the last four touchdowns. What, what stands out to you most about that game? Well, I think they, you know, they did everything to, uh, to win the game. And, uh, you know, what stands out to me is it's – you know, they made plays uh, when it mattered most. You know, offensively, we really didn't get a lot going. And, and defensively, um, you know, they just, they've got a lot of weapons. And uh, and they played well. And uh, it's, a, it's a really, really good football team. And, and obviously, there's things you, you take away from it. And, um, you know, things you'd like to say, okay, we can do better. Um, but what stands out to me in that game is that they beat us. Was there a strong then? Well, I hope we get another shot at them. And, and is there a sense now of, of real eagerness? I think there's certainly a, a sense of, uh, I don't know, eagerness or just excitement, right, that you've uh, done all that you can and, and you get a right to, to play in this game. And I think, you know, after that game, you know, there's still a season to be played, and, and you knew that uh, it doesn't matter what you want to, to be able to have an opportunity to even get a chance to, you know, what looked like possibly play them again. Uh, there's a lot of things that had to happen, and uh, and so I think the focus uh, needed to be and, and was just on, you know, playing the season out. And I always think that you, you play the season out, and at the end, um, you kind of look up and, and, you know, what have you earned the, the right to do? You know, is it to earn the right to play one more game in a bowl game? Is it earn the right to play uh, in the championship game? All those things, but you got to play the season to, to get to that. Thank you, Paul. Yep. Your next question comes to line of Nathan Baird of the Cleveland.com. Hi, Paul. You, you mentioned the offense uh, not being able to really get going the first time you played Ohio State. This is obviously one of the teams on a couple occasions that's been able to, to limit Jonathan Taylor. When you go into a game like this as a coach, what, how do you sort of walk the line between wanting to find, I guess, some new wrinkle to, to get things started, but also you know, knowing what your identity is that's worked so well and just trying to find a way to do that better? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's a great point, and I think that's the – I don't want to say the art of it, but I think you can make a huge mistake if, um, you know, you, we've played 12 games and, and you are kind of who you are. Um, and, you know, if you're playing in a game such as this, you've done some things well along the way. And, and yet you, you do try to, I think every game you try to, you know, what are a couple things that either, uh, you know, we've been practicing but haven't done yet. Or is there something that you see on film that, um, you know, maybe you can do something that, that kind of is just a one-off maybe of, of what you're doing. But I think uh, all in all, you know, you've got to think your players play best when 
they're doing things that they they know and they've done and and because uh, you think you know what you're going to get um you know from another team but but you don't know so i think the, the players have to understand kind of all the little intricacies of the play i think a lot of times if you just run plays some may work but it's uh it can be tough so i think it, you know there's a real fine line of trying to do something new and then doing things that you've done well do you see the key here is being finding a way to have success somewhere else in the offense to, to maybe take some of the focus off of just in a game like this you know it's a um, it's a really really talented defense and I think they've done a great job in coaching it um, giving them a plan kind of plays to their strengths and, and so you know, you're trying to look at and, and study and put together a plan that, that gives your players a chance but you still have to then go out and execute I think that's the biggest thing that um, and, and I think you, you know right now heck you're looking at what are all the possibilities your next question comes from the line of Dan Hope of the 11 Warriors Paul what's it like preparing for a rematch like this are there different things you do during your week of preparation than you would if you're playing a team for the first time this season? You know, that's a good question in the sense that, um, you know, I think when you get later on in the season, you've got a sense, even if you haven't played them, you've got a sense of kind of who, who they are and, and what they're doing. But then you also know that you're probably going to see something different, right? And and I think that the same can be said when you play someone Again, you've got a, a good understanding of who they are, but you know I don't think you're just going to take, oh, this was their plan against us, and uh, that's all they're going to do. So I think you got to you can approach it like a, it's a, you've got information, you've played against. So I think your players know, um, you know, certainly know. You're not wondering, you know, is the film what are they like in real compared to the film? You you know that. Um, you know, your players know that, but then I think it's a, you know, there's a, there's a newness to the preparation. How do you feel like your team has improved from when you played Ohio State in October to where you are now? Well, I, I think that, you know, certainly we've had, you know, players uh, continue to, I've, I've liked that about this group, they continue to work at their craft and, and to work at getting better and, you know, it's a, I think that's a tricky question in the sense that, you know, you don't play the same team over and over and over. And so you can't say, okay, this is, we're better here, we're better here, we're better there, right? It's uh, each week's a new opponent and there's kind of new challenges to those. And so um, I love the way that our, our team is prepared for each week and, and gone out and, and played that week and, and, um, yeah, I think they're, they're continuing to to do that, but you know what? It's it's hard for me to say oh, this is exactly where we're better from that game to, to the next game. Thanks, Paul. Yep. Your next question comes from line of Stephen Means of Cleveland.com. Hey, coach. The last time you guys played Ohio State, Chase Young was just able to kind of have his way on the on the line of scrimmage, like, then, then Michigan was able to you know, shut him down and keep him at bay more than anybody else has this year. I know it's early in the week, but did you guys, like, as coaching staff, see anything that Michigan was doing against Tayshaun that maybe you guys would be able to use on Saturday? You know, I mean, there's no question. He's a, uh, he's a heck of a football player. And, you know, I think they, you know, they're, you know, their players played well against them, and, you know, they did some things. I think, like you said, it is early, and obviously uh, we didn't have a very good answer uh, in our game, and so we've got to be better. Thanks, Your next question comes from the line of Tim May of LettermanRow.com. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Coach, I was just wondering if you could give me uh, maybe any similarities and maybe some contrast you see between J.K. Dobbins and Jonathan Taylor and the way they play the game? Well, I think the similarity is they're, they're both really, really good, talented football players, right? And um, I think that, 
you know, they're they're in different systems, right, and play for different teams. And so I think that makes it a little bit harder to just stay, you know, whether like one's this yeah. and one's that. But they are both, I think they both mean a ton to their team, and I think they're both, you know, really, really good football players. What did your team do, uh, and you were, I'm sure, in the midst of it all, to basically get his act back together after that game at Ohio State uh, a month ago? Well, I mean, five weeks ago, what what did you see that just came right about your team after that? Well, I think they, you know, they realized, you know, we didn't, you know, we had two weeks there where it didn't go the way you wanted it, right? But I think they did a good job yeah. of just continuing to, and then we, the bye week actually followed that and and came back and and, and how are we going to make the, the most out of the rest of our schedule? And it was to play each game and... Uh, I thought they did a good job of that, just kind of being locked in and focused in the moment of the week, the moment of that opponent, and and uh, I think that's what I appreciate most of this group. Thanks, man. Yep. Your next question is the line of Leo Haggerty of It's Sports Magazine. Good afternoon, Coach. Hello. Coach, what's the one thing on offense and defense you have to be successful to beat Ohio State? <laughs> I laugh because there's. I think there's. I mean, you're you're on a, and you're playing against a really good team, and, and you've got to do. Uh, the one thing, if you're to say answer the question literally, the one thing is you have to you have to play good, winning football. You know what I mean? But that's really that doesn't help you much, right? Doesn't help. You gotta you gotta execute. You gotta. Uh, when when you have a chance to make plays and, and uh, when you know you, you, the game's made up of a lot of individual battles and you, you know you got to win your share of them and you know anytime you play this game you know turnovers takeaways are a big part of it. That's what's awesome about the game is it's it's not I don't say it's a complicated game but it's not there's a lot that goes into it and so I think it's. Uh, it's hard for me to, to give you kind of an accurate answer on that question. Coach, last question, and thank you for your time today. The Big Ten is the only conference where Mother Nature can really have an effect on the game, and yesterday was a perfect example with you in Minnesota. Yeah. Playing, in, playing indoors, is that advantage Ohio State, advantage Wisconsin, or advantage both of you? Hey, you know, that's uh... Uh, that's a question that is a good question, but I don't know if I have the answer to it. You know, because both teams are playing in all the games. You know, you, both teams are playing in it, and and you know, for us, that's a part of it, right? And handling with it, handling all those different uh, the elements, and um, and obviously, when you go indoors, you, you don't have that. Um, but I don't, I don't know that it's uh, advantage one or the other. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Our next question comes from of Joey Kaufman of the Columbus Dispatch. Paul, what do you see as the, maybe the most important thing to do to, to stop someone like Chase Young? Or should we try to slow him down? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you've got to, you know, however you're attacking him or uh, – you know, it's when you're in passing situations, I guess attack. But I mean, you have to you have to execute against him, and and he's obviously uh, so talented. You know, that's uh, that's easier said than done. You know, for many, you watch the film, and and yeah, I think. But you gotta it, it all comes. You gotta play the game of football, and and when you get times to to try to help, and so it's not just a one on one, because uh, obviously he's. He's as good as any, you know, in those situations. Um, you know, you try to take advantage of it. But I, I, I think what makes them a heck of a defense is, and I don't know what they would say, but I think he's a better player because they've got a lot of really good players around him. I think they all, I think that's what is impressive about their defense. You know, you can't just focus on one or two players because the other ones are talented enough to, to, cause havoc and, and, and beat you. And I think that's the 
you know, certainly it's, you know, he stands out, you know, in the game that we played against him and we watch him on film, but there's a lot of guys that stand out on it. So you got to, you know, it comes down to you got to, you know, obviously have a plan for it, but you got to execute it. What do you think you guys learned the most or took away from the first matchup with him? You know, I think there's a lot of lessons you learn, and, and uh, you know, we knew going into the game he's a heck of a football player and, and would say the same thing coming out of it. Thanks. Your next question comes from Jason Bear of the Cleveland.com. Ryan Day said that he thought, you know, over these five weeks that have passed since the first meeting that both teams have changed a lot. What do you feel like is maybe the most important way your team has changed might not be the right word, but developed, improved, however you want to say it? Yeah, I think in the you know, the last few games, uh I think you know, some some out of necessity and some out of kind of natural growth. Uh, I think we've got more guys contributing. You know, if I take a look back at kind of our last four games, um, you know, we've had a lot of guys that have, have made, uh, you know, significant contributions. Uh, you know, guys have made plays, and whether they were in big moments or because of the play, it, it created kind of a big moment. You know, so I think that that way, um, you know, we just – We've had to, and it's been it's been good to get a lot of contribution from probably more guys than when we're heading into and and even playing that game. Again, just to coach a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. All right, coach. Looks like that's all the questions we received. Awesome. That completes the Big Ten Football Championship Game Coaches Teleconference. 